I have no apologies today, and Tony Huntington will be joining us online. And is hopefully there. Right? Uh, yeah, but... yeah. Yes. Yes. He'll be here with us momentarily. And today we do have some members in our public forum. Visitors to the campus here, welcome. And first up, Trevor Lawrence to talk to us about the Iceland Line Roof Project. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm joined today by Diane Elliott. My name is Trevor. I still only have five minutes, so I'll have to be quick because I can talk all day for those that know me. For those who don't know me, uh, originally from Canada, been in Central Otago in this community since 2001. I've been involved with Iceland Line for the last 20 years. Been on the executive committee on and off for the last 10 years. Got two kids, work at the Clyde Dam. I know a lot about many things, and uh, I certainly know a lot about ice rinks after the last 10, 12 years of coming to an agreement with the community of what we can afford, what we want, and what's presented to you right now is right in the middle. It is really a good project. Years ago, we looked at opportunities over by the pool. That was extremely ambitious, even for a town like Auckland. Those are my mistakes. So I'm here to say we've rounded ourselves. We're looking to have a, an enclosure with open sides at the facility we currently exist at in Moni Park. This will keep the rain off. Last year we had that much ice. We were trying to keep it cold and it cost us a fortune. This will ensure that we stay open when we have large bookings and give us some confidence. This will ensure that um, we don't have a start of an event, then the ice gets too mushy from rain or sun. So this is about providing a bit of stability to our cloud and reducing the burden of all the tears. Um, we don't think we'll be open anytime soon for 12 months. There might be talk about enclosing it, but that's on our list. The volunteers are happy with a six month season starting in Easter, going right through to a Blossom Festival weekend. And that'll align with all the club's activities uh, at the rest of the rinks, which is going on. Take a vote, please him in Dunedin. So that's what I'm here for. Uh, generously, we're looking at, I think, 400,000 is the number that's been bounced around. There are a few items which will be parked. This is a very modest project. Um, things will have to progress over the next couple of years with the next person, myself, maybe, or someone else to see if we need a few more add-ons to keep the facility uh, from bird proofing or, or, or maintenance or, or sun. But we're quite happy with what we've got now. We're very pleased with our primary uh, contractor called our development. We've talked to all of them over the last 10 years and some from North Island. Even. So we have even looked at tent options. We've looked at Chinese container options. Um, so this steel structure is, is really quite uh, modest and in keeping with our community needs. Um, for those that have been there and had some time on the outdoor ice, it is pretty special. The clubs, the hockey, the curling, the skating are minority. We have thousands and thousands of school kids that Diane and the rest of the team manage. So with this open end, looking at the old main range, we're hoping to keep that same kind of look and feel to the facility. And that's when we're here to answer any questions or anything. Oh, thank you. Any questions from members? I guess that was my only, my only concern about enclosing it or putting a roof. Would, would you still be able to get the magical aspect of ice skating outside? It's a great question and it's been debated and that's why I think the, the moving to the new facility was going to lose a bit of that. It could just be a giant box with no windows in the middle of a, a field that maybe wouldn't get used that often. Mm -hmm. We think that people will still come from out of town to visit Alexandra and the community with this open air concept. Being Canadian, I, I have been back and forth a few times to Toronto where I'm from. They have 178 outdoor ice rinks. I haven't seen all of them, but I've seen a lot of them. And a few of them that are open air with a canopy like this are very well supported. And they do have a look and feel that is in keeping with what we're trying to achieve at the facility. We hate to go backwards with our patronage and our numbers. Absolutely a risk, but we think we've got it right. Good opportunity for you to try before you potentially buy. Absolutely <laughs> right. It was a bit of fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. And we welcome Kim Churchill. 
Beautiful, uh, Madam Chairperson and board members. Uh, I've, hit, I've headed this up the way forward loop curves at the half mile reserve. Nearly 18 months ago, the council with only three working days notice and with incredible arrogance tried to clear the trees. They now have had their way with the dictatorial help from the mayor. The total disregard for community and your board has been appalling. If I was a board member or even a councillor, I would be alarmed, particularly going forward. One person, one vote in contentious issues should be the norm. Standing orders don't say that a casting vote must be used. Our community has a right to ensure that the redevelopment, as is what was shown at the drop-in meeting on November 21 to the public, uh, perhaps maybe without the beehives in the mowing grass. That thousands of dollars Boffer Miskell report actually influenced a lot of people about the reserve future and needs to be anchored into the way forward. To step away from that after all what's happened over the 18 months would be straight deceit. Unless, of course, is another dictatorial veto of a VCB decision. Planting slash survival without irrigation is going to be a huge challenge. It's not quite up there. It's not quite like growing rhododendrons in the likes of Wanaka. Community involvement will be the key to all this, but you may all find that interest from locals has somewhat evaporated in the last few weeks. weeks, The community input at the redevelopment at Aranui Dam 2014-15 was a great example of what can happen within the community. The local neighbourhood community put in thousands of dollars of personal money and Hugh Clark and all the volunteers Operators and big earthwork machineries included demonstrated what our Upper Bridge Hill community is all about. Now, with the lack of CODC maintenance, it's falling back into untidiness. The railways are out of control, neighbours are smothered by wilding willows, grass cutting is hit and miss. Us locals now find it very difficult to keep up with the maintenance work there, particularly cost wise. But the mayor got his way. But his two vote legacy is that maybe locals don't want to join in up there. We still demand that the site is left totally tidy in the first instance. And the redevelopment has real input from our community. Piles of slash and windrows like at Grover Hill and Sugarloaf are unacceptable. To finish on a more humorous lighter note, in the report that's before you, you must have read it, to try and say that the trees at the reserve are dangerous because of rabbits and rats undermining the root structure, as written in that report, is unbelievable. What an insult to one's intelligence. But are these some sort of superbreds or mutated hybrid from a mole and a beaver? And I wonder if perhaps Councillor Patterson has experienced this at, at the homestead, which is hugely surrounded by pines. Or was the, was the report author having a lead of us? Or did J.K. Rowling write that bit? What a joke. But it leaves the way forward for some great Facebook satire. Up there today, after a big storm, guess what? Not even a broken branch. Cheers. Thank you, Ken. Does anybody have any questions? <coughs> Ken? No? Well, thank you for your commitment over the past 18 months as well, Ken. Well, it's uh, been entertaining. Yeah. And, uh, no real lows. Um, 18 months is a long time to hold the council to account, and I'm proud that we did that. Uh, my biggest regret, another regret is my biggest concern is 
Uh, just what's around the corner, and, and, and particularly in terms of the mess that's been shown to be left behind in these places. Cheers. I anticipate you'll let us know if it's not. <laughs> yeah, I thought you might. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Moving, please, to confirmation of our minutes from the previous meeting, which can be found on page seven. Somebody is happy to move the those are Thank you, Roger. Seconded, Dolly. All those in favour? Against, carries. <laughs> Declarations of Interest Register, page 14 of your agenda. Just a reminder to make sure you're regularly checking those um, registered interests and letting Wayne know if anything has changed. And we move now to our first report of the day, item number 23.2.2, the Wildland Conflict Control Policy. Welcome back, Gordon and So this, this paper before you is um, a response to the question you asked the council on staking, and I'll take the paper as read and you can ask any questions on that. Does anybody have any questions for Gordon? Gordon, what assurances can you give? us and residents that the original Bothamiscal plan for, for that area will be implemented. Oh, that's just, uh, um, that's the one we can talk on. Yes. Yeah, the, not the other one. So that's what we will be coming back to. Well, I guess our intention is to come back to the board with um, updated prices and confirming that plan and what it will look like. The, the resolution number paper lying on the table that would direct us to do that. Okay. Yeah. When do you imagine this work would start? If the, the, the work of actually clear filling that area? So we would I anticipate that depending on the availability of locking the contractors to happen. So we would like to finish by the end of June, which is the financial year, but I'd like to have a little, little bit sooner to some, some April, May-ish. I need to confirm that depending on the decision today. And for replanning, um, my recommendations would be to look at doing that in approximately this time next year. So we've got some, get some moisture in the ground. We've got the time to decide um, in uh, first, first weed issues that come up to your toes and first instance over the, the spring and summer. And then we can get it well planned and it's taken time. Um, and then for the new type, potentially the, the costs of this could be less, potentially $35,000 from log sales. <clears throat> is that being looking at the, the quality of those trees up there, which isn't particularly high? Is that being fairly optimistic that they will probably only end up being good for firewood? So, this is from a long contractor? Yes. I'm only passing that okay. information. Okay. Yeah. Off. Right. So, I'm not an expert in whether they're good jobs or not, or what their market is. <clears throat> I assume then that when the contract is awarded to the contractor, Will be fairly tough terms as far as what that site will look like when it's finished, as far as slash is concerned and um, removal of waste. So the, the slash is to be chipped on site. On site. That and if the, we pile so of chip on site, if they're in the where the I guess most convenient places for when the for chipping. Well, I, I, I think we'll, we'll utilise that going forward as, yeah. as much. As I think we can rest assured that the operation will be well policed by the neighbours. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> will that chipping form part of the selling contract? Yeah, as part of the cost. 
that's what we that's right. And will that will that chipping happen like just over the bank here as we go? As uh, opposed to doing it in because that will keep the site a lot tidier. So we haven't done months later. I am anticipating it's done as they as they progress, mean, but once they've got all the logs out, we'll just come back and scoop it up and chip it. I'm not quite sure what this program is. We haven't talked that through in that detail. But it will be done as part of that sort of work program when you are not left and come back in six months' time and that will be done at that time. Okay. Thank you. The recommendations before us today are A, that the Vincent Community Board receives the report and accepts the level of significance. B, notes the Council's decision that the staged removal of wild and conifers from within individual identified sites is not permitted on Council owned and managed land. And C, notes that this includes the removal of trees from the half mile recreational reserve. Happy to move it. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Jamie. Second, all those in favour? Against count. Thank you. Moving to page number 22, please. Just check here with Lane on the one sitting on the table. Two other reasons. Have you got another one there? Do you want <clears throat> do you want to consider those ones that were on the table there? I think now would be the appropriate time to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so additional resolution set on the table. C authorizes the redevelopment of the half mile recreation reserve in line with the proposed development plan for the reserve based on a natural central Otago landscape. D directs the CEO to investigate funding opportunities for the development of the half mile recreation reserve with options reported back to the Vincent Community Board's May 2022 meeting. This is the basement from last time, so we're quite much. No, I just wondered. It's easy to look at. Yeah, see, because we yeah, recognise that the natural central Otago landscape is lovely. However, we would like to enable provisions for some exotic plantings for shade and the like. Is that would see mean that all we get is some tussocks and some. Uh, so I think you could uh, make it more specific for that, but. My what the title of the um, plan we consulted on was central Otago landscape rather than an urban type park, which was another option. So that's um, if we want to change that, then not the only thing. But um, I just don't have a plan in front of me. To, yeah, that's the intention of um, the one that the plan that was consulted was for the natural Otago landscape. So it's some copses or plantings and some trails through it. Um, and some shelter along the visitors' boundary. Um, so briefly, I understated it. That's what it was. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So do we want to? The original plan we consulted on had no green spaces and beehives and et cetera, et cetera. And we're going. We're pulling back from that original one. We will be seeing. Will a final plan come to us? Yeah, so there was two plans we, yeah. we we came and one the one the more urbanized one was quite quite expensive and the board opted to consult on that more natural central attack one that featured the, the rocks and some native plants and trails with the trails to it and some seats and things um and here yeah, we can bring uh, the part of this resolution we'll refine that so we know what it actually looks like um what we're going to, how we're going to irrigate that and um, a, a more updated cost increase. So we'll be able to come back with that if that's the wish yeah. of the board. No problem. So does that recommendation need, need to change to reflect that will be a further and further and final report brought to us, which we will then approve at the May meeting? The redevelopment. Yeah. Yeah, that makes yep. sense. Yeah. Yep. And, that, and then everybody knows exactly mm -hmm. what, what's proposed. So. Okay. Um, now I'm just going to struggle to find some words. Authorises the redevelopment of the half mile recreation reserve subject yep. to a crew of, of oh. a landscape yeah. and landscape yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. Does it have to have something that's subject to the funding, which will reflect in this in E? So just give me that so that doesn't sort of interest us there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, if we bring that's what, yeah, the price and say where the money's coming yeah. from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. 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 But we we've done simultaneously where the money's coming from. Yeah. Yeah. On that, I'm quite happy to move. D and E. D and E, yes, David. Thank you, Janet. All those in favour? Aye. Against. Carried. Okay, so. Well, thank you, gentlemen. You all good for that. And now we move to item number 23.2 from the annual plan budget and fees and charges schedule. Welcome, Susan. Thank you. Um, the last session we went through the general things that were pushing um, the rates increases up. They haven't um, basically enhanced this by through the process. So um, I'll take the report as being read. Um, just to let you know that the growth factor that we talk about will be updated for the final annual plan. So we will reopen our forecasting tool in April while the um, um, annual plan is out for consultation. And um, we'll increase, um, we've got the known growth figure in at that stage. Um, so basically, we've outlined where the increases in rates are coming from. Um, and the big, the big portion of it is depreciation for our uh, property evaluations and it's been counted in some way um, in part through uh, change in their depreciation for passive park spaces. Um, so that's mitigated it a little bit. Mm -hmm. So there is more detail in the appendices on those, so um, I'll take questions at the end. That's okay. Um, as we were going through the process, we um, did drill through into the reserve accounts and as stated previously, we will um, have a good look at those through the LTP process and bring them into the financial strategy. Um, so I have table, so the, the annual plan as it stands at the moment has the 400,000 for the ice and line project. And that is on the basis that 50% of it would be granted through the reserves contribution, which those, are, those come to us through the um, subdivision process. And 50% would be coming from a general reserve account. Um, so basically, I have tabled some options that we can put in the um, consultation document for the rate plan, but certainly the first option is the one that we had modelled and is included within the rates rise that we are going out with. Um, the only other thing that I need to draw your attention to is fees and charges. The fees and charges as they currently stand in your papers is a 50%, 50 cent increase in full charges. Based on the fact that we are in discussions about how we are going to look at the full investment account through the financial strategy, we propose that we don't actually make that change now. We actually make it through the LTP process if that's what's required. So we confirm, we think. Their advice is that we should be looking at that as a whole and not making that a small increase now. We'll do it as a whole and making the decision to be able to. So I guess that changes my recommendation if we agree the fees and charges with the amendment to the pools charges that they go back to the 22 23 charge. 
<laughs> I don't expect you to answer this, Sid, but I noticed that we're now charging for green waste disposal for the for propose for um, domestic green waste uh, bootloads and when I take the fresh air, which has always been free. When was it? No, it has been charged. No. I haven't paid. Um, you paid charge five dollars for a trailer, but then it was free for a boot. A yeah, yeah. I mean, so that is that, is that proposed those charges. If you take your trailer, yes, they go across the way bridge, but if you had a, a fange in your boot, it was free. It still was on that. No, I read that. Yeah, it's a new charge. It's a new yeah. charge. It's a new charge. So yeah. would you all be um, bringing that? Um, who councils are checking on the 30th of March? Yes. Um, and I guess thinking about that, that's that's something I know is that that if we've got the organic bin, then you can't you can't have that free of charge at the transfer station because it's it's yeah, it's yeah, no, yeah, yeah. That's 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 my question, but I know it's probably not this forum because. Um, <laughs> But that is the reason. Yeah, yeah. It's because of the instigation of the organic bin. I've seen that one right back. Okay, well, I'll save those questions for council meeting. Okay. I had a couple of questions mm -hmm. um, through some of the fees and charges. So I'm not sure if there's someone that will be able to answer these or not. Mm -hmm. um, it seemed like quite a substantial difference between the price for a water connection to Lake Dubson as opposed to Cromwell. I wondered if there was. A particular reason for that. This is on the bottom, uh, on the top, sorry, of page 27. Mm -hmm. This is like a supply, it's 7100, there's Cromwell 3. 387? Yeah. Yeah. Information to hand. That's all right. Maybe that could be. Yeah. Circulation later. Yeah. It is remaining. That's the same condition as next, though. There's no change. Mm. And then I just wanted to check on page, and this is probably just a note for checking. Mm -hmm. On page 28, there's mm -hmm. a price mm -hmm. for disposal of fridges, freezers, and wanted to confirm that that does include the additional fee for degassing. Mm -hmm. Just confirm that. I know it's been talked about previously and I thought it was higher than that or but maybe not. Spiritual chart, that's the twenty-five dollars. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just to make sure that that is included in that. Okay. The pools wasn't a bit of a concern for me, uh, given New Zealand's current drowning rates and the year-on-year -year increase, which is not ideal. So it would be really great if we can continue to investigate those options of cost savings before the increases, which are substantial, mm -hmm. are passed on to the people swimming there. And I think that LTP is the appropriate uh, place for that. Mm -hmm. And then just a couple on the specific rates on page 56. Uh, I'm co board. Is that still being used for anything? It is. There are still things that have been. Perfect. Three. No money in the budget lines for the by the Alexander Walkway. Should there be? Yeah. I do. Uh, still on page 56. It's at the bottom of the recreation and culture charge. They that is for what on that chart. It just says supply to Alexandra Walkway and there's no money in there. Mm. There hasn't been any? Mm. No. Mm. Not that we charge don't charge any. No, no, it's um this is on the rates. This is promotion rate, recreation and culture charge, oh, not fee schedule. Oh sorry, this is in the sorry, this is on page fifty six. Mm. 
And was um, you three of that out of the team that did have a zero line budget, so we can go away and look at that for you. That was um, like when we did out of the team, maybe um, had anticipated any budget, and then when I could have us done some of you. Perfect, just so we can make sure that it's not that the numbers are seen this, and yeah. then all of a sudden, like. Yeah, I would yeah. say because it's yeah. actually if you look across where there's zeros all the way across, it's not yeah. something that's in use at the moment is owned. Yeah. Um so the costs must be sitting in somewhere else yeah. within that um group. So that it might have gone up to other reserves and groups of because it's because there's zero cost in there this year as well. It's currently a Mm -hmm. And then, sorry, I've just got one more on it and then I'll hand over to you. At the top of page 57, the Alex and Imoco cemetery budgets. There's quite a variance there. I wondered if that would be accounted for. Um, I I'm presuming at that level it will be um, depreciation on the transaction asset. The drop will be due to the of park. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. No, wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, oh, sorry, I found another one. <laughs> sorry, Roger, this is the last one. There is on page 60. Pools, parks, and cemeteries. There are two lots of two thousand dollars worth of fence in for Fraser Domain. Are we doing two different projects, or is that? What is now? Thank you. Perfect. Sure. Can, I just, can I just revisit the water? Um, Waste water condition. Was it the waste water condition? Um, no, I'm sorry, drinking water. New connections will have to be Okay, so that's under the development contributions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's it's based on the, those development contributions are based on a calculation, quite a quite a, an extensive calculation depending on the capital expenditure and the full growth paths. So they will always be different. Yeah. Okay. No, that's fine. Thank you. Right. Um, question about the recreation and culture charge. Uh, this is going to, about to page 56. Item um, five museums, 4415. Um, and the amount given $136,782. Uh, what is that tied to? And what is that um, more than just? Maintenance of this, uh, make them fresh work. Okay, I just I don't have the with me specifically, but I would actually say it's probably the depreciation on the building. Depreciation, okay, yeah. then. And then just a few pages. Just I'll, I'll check that, but that is, um, and it's not dissimilar to what's. So the increase from the LTP will be the depreciation, but there was obviously something significant in as far as building maintenance or um, some sort of contract issue allowed for an LTP through planned operational costs. Mm -hmm. Um, so I can just I can just actually have a look and and pull that out and let you know what it was. Okay, the potential source of confusion is which particular location in Clyde, which of the two locations that might be referring to, um, because you know that at the one near the uh, um, cycleway is um, involves potentially a large amount of expenditure, and I wonder whether that was built in. I have another um, question, and that's on page 50, 
the nine capital expenditure or again on the uh, Clyde Museum and uh, Rick mentions four hundred thousand dollars and I wondered what that was um, whether that was tied to the location near the uh, cycle link. Once again, it's been allowed for it in the LTP, so I'll we'll just have to go back and move it off of your set box. Thank you. Um, if you yes, on page 61, you're able to start the breakdown of the individual projects. And for the Clive Museum, the Clive Museum redevelopment, but outside that, unfortunately, I'm not too sure which museum that that's for. Yeah, thank okay. Any additional questions? Uh, um, just uh, I do know that there is uh, a lot of the fees and charges that remain the same, so um, I can imagine there's been a lot of work looking at that. I guess. Um, from a council's perspective, is that a sustainable model? With um, obviously not, and excluding pools, because I know Tame is going to shoot me down here about the pool. <laughs> um, I'm not sure that it is. Um, but I feel that my advice has been to go with the status quo for this EUV. It is what it is, and through the LTP is the time to be having those conversations about if we are funding this and we expect we miss an out through fees and charges, what happens if demand goes up or down, what's the sensitivity around that so we can make some more informed decisions. Um, and that just really didn't, um, I think because we've got greater conversation to have around that financial strategy that we best to wrap all of that up as well. Thank you. And I guess the only thing just following on from what Tom said is that uh, if you look at the numbers, and I, I appreciate that we're only up to a six month period, uh, it looks as though the pools are back um, at this stage. So it would be, yeah, I guess it's definitely conversation the community wants needs to be involved in yeah. for having that. Even if I appreciate it's only 50 cents, but we don't want to just encourage anyone. So mm -hmm. yeah. thank you. Did you have a question, Jane? Perfect. Thank you. We have recommendations on page 22. A receives the report and accepts the level of significance. B agrees the draft Vincent Ward 2023 to 24 annual plan budget and recommends to Council for inclusion in the 2023 24 annual plan. C agrees to accept the Vincent Ward 23 24 fees and charges schedule and re recommends to Council for inclusion in the 23 24 annual plan without increases to the entry prices at the Alexander Pool. Tracy is happy to move that. Thank you. And Rob is happy to second. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. Thank you very much, Susan. Now we move to page number 64. Financial report. Well, that's a period or period ending. Too many periods in that. 31st of December 2022. Welcome. Zoom. Thank you for having me. Um, so the paper is being read. Um, for the first six months to the 31st of December 2022, there is an overall unfavorable operating variance of $651,000. Um, the revenue has, the, has an unfavorable variance of $1.1 million. This is predominantly due to the timing of the land sales budget or Dunstan Park um, of being informed that stage three will be due to release in March, which is this month. So fingers crossed that does happen. Um, one area I'd like to 
talk about is the use of these and other income. So it's an unstable variance of $162,000 there. This is made up of two main areas which will actually affect the budgets throughout the rest of the year. Um, so camp fees at the Clive Recreation Reserve, I may have discussed this year before, um, has been left in the annual plan budget for 22-23. Um, as the campground is now under a lease agreement, this revenue is no longer being collected. We have made adjustments for this in the upcoming annual plan, 22-23 year. And I believe off the top of my head, it was a value of about $148,000. So that will stay for the remaining of the year. Another area is the pool and swim store fees, which at the moment have an unfavorable variance of $74,000. There is a seasonal part to that because, of course, the December is before the new school holiday areas. So we will see a little bit more revenue coming in through there. However, a couple of years ago, when they implemented a new quota sales system, there was an error made um, to the GST um, to a value of $33,000. So the council has made a voluntary disclosure to the IRD for this and for the home that GST. So that will also remain for the rest of the year. Um, expenditure at the moment has a stable variance of $459,000. This again is mainly due to the cost of sales due to the land sales. So that should change when we do get the revenue coming through from those. Um, there's also a few other different bits and pieces. So there's the rates expense, which is shown higher than budget. That should smooth out throughout the rest of the year. And the grants variance is due to the issuing of the Alec Fund for different museums grant as per resolution 22.2.4. Capital expenditure has a favourable variance of $480,000. The main driver to this is the timing of the Alexandra River Park project, with the resource consent now being issued design months to now progress with that project. There's also a few projects in Town which are either starting or on hold. So we have the tennis courts, which I believe are going to start in March. I'm not sure if they've started yet or not. Um, and then there's the Omakau Playground and Irrigation Projects, which are waiting for confirmation of the Omakau Community Hub Innovation to be decided. Are there any questions? Questions for Donna? No? Wonderful. Thank you. Recommendation that the report be received. Happy to move that and die is ready to second me. Thank you. All those in favour? Thank you. We now move to page number 70. The lovely back page. Read for the mayor. Yeah. Gail us with his. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm glad I made it. Um, well, Kia ora, members. Apologies for my lateness. It's a bit of a crazy week. Um, so last week we had an announcement on Lake Onslow, which was sort of an orange light. Um, whether they're going to go ahead with it or not, we still don't know and likely won't know till the end of 2026. Certainly not till the end of 2026 if it is to go ahead. We might hear earlier one way or the other if it isn't. To go ahead. Um, and a lot, a lot of people focus on Onslow as being a tribute thing, but if it does go ahead, the impacts in Vincent Ward will be absolutely massive, um, for better or for worse. So we should all keep ourselves abreast on that. Um, I spoke at the end or submitted at the end of the last month to the Select Committee on the latest three waters legislation. Basically, the guts of what I said was that the lack of security for standardised or harmonised pricing under the latest proposal um, or the latest law that's in front of um, Parliament for consideration is goes against the strong implication that there would be standardisation. So for those who are new around the board when the three waters reforms were first put to us, it was basically said whatever the cost of a litre of water in Christchurch is would be the same in Cromwell, or a connection in Patiara would be the same as you know somewhere else we're getting with P in the other part of the 
place that I can't think of a um, alliterative, alliterative name for. And then the bill just simply doesn't protect that. It leads it up to a government policy statement at a time, um, which just isn't good enough because if this is to go ahead, the trade-off supposedly for local communities such as us losing our power and control over what happens was that there would be significant cost savings. But if those cost savings are only going to fall on the cities, then what's the point? Um, and of course, we're particularly sensitive to it here because of our experience with Aurora, because it's exactly the same thing, a monopolised utilities industry um, that will do what it jolly well please. So a bit of concern about that. Um, whether they listened or not, who knows? I'm also travelling to Wellington tomorrow to discuss the proposed rejigs of the reforms of the Minister of Local Government. It should be interesting. Other things that I've done, I met the new members of the Tourism Advisory Board on the 13th of February, including Madam Chair. I had a Zoom on one of many Zooms on the 15th about the local, uh, that was with the local advisory group, the Dunedin Hospital Bill. 16th, the second had a Business South Advisory Committee meeting, so I sit on the Board of Business South locally. Um, the advisory group of the board, I don't think they've even sorted our name out yet. Business South used to be the Otago Chamber. Uh, and they had their meetings alternately between Alex and Cromwell. Dinner with the Contact Energy Board um, and Clyde on the 16th. Um, meeting of the Mania Harakia Exemplar Project Governance Group with Tracy on the 21st. Uh, had a meeting with Earl Bardsley, who is the uh, promulgator of um, Onslow. And Earl's quite a professor, or I should use his proper title, he's quite keen to um, see Onslow be used for more than just electricity generation, i.e. irrigation. And there's a number of things that could be done, including potentially putting a four kilometre tunnel between Onslow and the Green Lane Reservoir, which feeds into the Manaburn, which would feed into the Manihitakea at times of low flow. <laughs> A couple of potential problems when the if it is a dry year and it's a dry year in the lakes as well as here, um, that water is going to be incredibly expensive. But all options need to be looked at. It may be cheaper than rebuilding falls down, although I suspect it's going to need to be rebuilt anyway. So who knows? Um, attended a LGNZ National Council meeting on the first of March, followed by rural and provincial sector meeting in Wellington on the second and third. And probably that highlight of the rural and provincial sector meeting was just hearing from the people involved in um, Cyclone Gabriel and just the mind boggling, incredible devastation. I mean, we all see it on the TV, but when you get to hear from them firsthand, just incredible and really interesting to hear from the Mayor of Tarapiti how things work that you don't think about. So the biggest impact they had, of course, they had loss of lives and loss of, loss of housing and everything, so that's the wrong term to use, but uh, perhaps an unforeseen one was that. They were out of power for several days, which meant there was no internet, which meant there was no FBOS, there was no um, credit card bank, no nothing. And cash very quickly became king. And then all the cash wound up in the supermarket safe. Um, what do you do then? And there's no more cash in the community because everyone's going to their piggy banks to get food and stuff. So um, it's those things that we need to think about. And also the phenomenal um, good fortune that Elon you know, Musk decided to put a whole lot of satellites up. <laughs> To uh, get Starlinks to work because they proved to be far more versatile than the, um, than the um, old school satellite phones, including being able to use FPOS to get the money back into the community. So, really quite remarkable technology, but it was a very useful um, thing to, uh, to talk to those folk about. Um, I had a visit by scouts um, around the building on, the, on Monday, the 6th of March. They wanted to look through a council meeting on the 8th. Um, last night, I welcomed the Psychological Health Services Conference of 70 people to Oliver's. Um, as I said to them in my welcoming address, I used to be on a psychologist one on one, not 70 on one. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, and I walked in, I didn't have an inferiority complex when I walked in, but by the time I were people introduced from Stanford and Harvard and Yale, I and mean, there's a whole lot of 12 year olds with PhDs, so I did have an <laughs> inferiority complex by the time they finished with me. It was a lovely night actually. And today attended the 50th, believe it or not, the 50th birthday party for Ranui Resta. So it was, yeah, that was a nice thing. We had to run away from it for I could have any pint talks. And it was just a thing. <laughs> happy to answer any questions that you know. Wonderful. Thank you, Tim. I'm happy to move that the report be received. Tracy Sample's a second that. Those in favour, aye, against, carried. Okay, Good follow up on that, we move to item 23.2.6, which is my chair's report. Um, so I, over the last, since our last meeting, uh, myself and a couple of other members met 
with Anna Robinson and Trudy Anderson to talk about biodiversity in the Vincent area, which was fascinating. Mm. I learned probably a lot more than I ever did at school in any of those classes, so it was really uh, helpful. I um, met with a tourism advisory board, which I've been appointed to for the first time in person. We were talking about the destination management plan and what implementation of that looks like going forward. Uh, it's great to have so many really standout people on the board. I mean, feel like I'm going to learn a lot from them as well. That was great. We had a wonderful VCD site tour and strategy day um, earlier in the month, which I think was really valuable. It was excellent to go along and see some of those projects that are up out of the ground now. That's always an exciting time. And to visit some of the other places that we didn't know about, like the little block of land out of so I know that we own. That was quite exciting. Uh, visited Alexandra Community House celebrating their 10th anniversary, so that's the way to run noise. Uh, that was really nice to meet with some of the tenants that are part of the uh, amazing facilities and services available from Community House. Um, met with the Schoons and Nikki Williams and the LGNZ Libraries Advisor, Marion Reed. So that was Excellent, really, wasn't it? Yeah, sort of her journey within the library sector and also where libraries are going to in the future where they become so much more of a community hub rather than just a place where you go and get books out and take them back or not take them back, as the case may be. Hopefully, everybody can take this back. Um, and then I had a really good meeting with one of the deputy principals at Dunstan High School to talk about how uh, the but the community board and council and staff as well could be part of civics education for our young people in the area. So recognising that there is a general election coming up later this year and also that we want to encourage more people to vote in our local body elections. I think actually it, it can start at home. We don't need to wait for Ministry of Education to do something and I'm excited to start progressing what might be hopefully a sort of 45 to 50 minute session with year 13s and then potentially year 12s as well. So if anybody else wants to be involved in that um, or donate some of their time, let me know and we can go along and stand in front of a whole lot of teenagers and talk about something that's exciting. There's local government elections. Thank you. Yes, this is my report. <laughs> Happy to move that that be received. Tracy, thank you very much for seeing me, Matt. All those in favour? Aye. <coughs> Against? Carried. We now move to the members' reports. Roger, would you like to give us up to Dr. Brown? Um, the Alexandra U3A got underway for the year, so we've had some good talks and a whole uh, series uh, laid out uh, for the rest of the year. I attended ABMI, uh, Alexandra District Museum Incorporated board <coughs> meetings, uh, attended the Dance of the Friendship Club meeting, Creative Writers Circle, I run uh, a couple of those. Um, with uh, Anna Robinson and uh, Trudy and Tamer uh, and Jaden, we had a meeting about the biodiversity in the area. And as Tamer said, uh, I think it was a very useful meeting. Uh, had the attended the AGM of the Central Otago Regional Orchestra. Uh, I talked to the Lawrence U3A, the um, University of Climate Change, so I did a talk down in Lawrence, and the Vincent Community Board Workshop, that Tamer has mentioned, uh, a very useful day. Thanks to today of that. And uh, I also chaired a meeting of Central Otago District Arts Trust. This might be my report. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Anna. Um, it's still super busy times for us at the golf course. Um, lots and lots of visitors from the North Island seeking a bit of mm -hmm. sunshine and mental well-being. So, um, and we've got a, like another 350 booked in next week. I think so, so it is, it is busy. Lots of people coming to our community, which is great. Um, I attended a balanced cottage meeting, so it's all going well there. Um, a wee community project with the rugby club getting firewood for the RSA is still a work in progress. We've got all the machinery. We just got to line our boys up for a couple of working bees, which will happen. And I just went on a wonderful tour of sexual stories, which was which was great. 
That's me. Thank you. Nothing. But the uh, uh, all reported we had a council meeting back uh, last week and hearings panel on the 14th. Um, a bit quieter as far as the hearings panel is concerned coming up for in April, but May is um, two, two solid weeks of, of um, hearings around plan change 19, which will be decisions made there will be quite significant for uh, Vincent. Um, Bill Nighy's new movie yesterday it should be um, seen by every bureaucrat who works in local government. It's a wonderful insight into um, decision making processes. It's set in 1965, but it's 1958 I should say, but it's still I think relevant in many ways. Um, but Apart from that, um, Blossom Festival's AGM is next week, and the Treasurer will be an announcing that we made a small but significant operating surplus of around $5,000, which is not bad on a $300,000 spend, and the budget was $115 over um, what would be forecast. So, all in all, a very favourable result. Um, record numbers in the park, uh, 13,500 people paid to get into the park, and that's not counting the under fives who get them for free. So, it was the biggest numbers um, the festival was had in years. So, all good. Thank you very much, Marty. Tracy. Um, pretty much the whole first half of the uh... Figure was taken up with the 125th celebrations for the Young Cow Show. Uh, exceptional day and a half because we extended it out because it was the royal event for Home Industries. And there was, I think, don't quote me on this, I think it was 1,100 or 1,200 entries into the Home Industries on its own. Um, it was a phenomenal display of significant personal. Uh, artworks and creations from people from around the district and it was just something to behold so for those of you that were there I hope you enjoyed it and uh, we have it every year so if you haven't been by all means please attend uh, so that was yeah that was uh, a huge undertaking and the committee uh, and the volunteers or well, everyone's a volunteer out there it just showed what a small community can actually put on and I think we had around about five, and this is once again the same as Martin said, excluding the under 16 year olds who did not pay, we had over 5,000 gate sales. Brilliant. So it just shows you just how big something can be in a rural community. Um, the, uh, I attended the same as Tim at the Need Group meeting. Uh, that's for anyone who does, has not looked at the men here here, survey at the moment that's going around, please let me know and I can give you a QR code. That's how technologically advanced we are with that group. Um, so that you can do that. There is also an email address and survey monkey, but the QR code takes you directly to the to the survey monkey. So that's that's moving along and it's gathering a lot of really great information. And Jane has been helping out for that as well. Uh, and I also chaired a Central Tiger Health Incorporated meeting last week and yeah I guess in the health space things are <laughs> they always are difficult and there's some really dedicated people behind the scenes uh, at our local hospital that are working very hard to make sure that the standard the exceptional standard of health that we get out there at Dunstan Hospital is maintained and continually improved. Thank you Jay. Yeah. Awesome. So I attended the biodiversity meeting with, um, so I'm trying to remember her name now. Yeah. Anna. <laughs> yeah. Which was really interesting. I'm, yeah, I'm more there than I probably did at high school. Uh, the, I think the VCB workshop day, which was awesome to get around and have a look. Since then, I've set a mission to go around and look at every reserve we have in the Vincent Ward. So slow making progress. My kids are loving it too. <laughs> I uh, went along to the AMP show for staff for the bins, which was really interesting to hear people's opinions on that. I think it was predominantly positive. 
Uh, also had my bin audited for <laughs> a bit of promotion that's coming up. So again, something really fascinating. If you've never had it done and they ever offered to do it, do it. <laughs> Learned a lot about our waste and what we throw in and what we can probably save and the space we can save in the bin, which is quite cool. Um, that's about it for me. It's been a bit of a quieter one. I just also want to acknowledge the staff for how quick they respond when you've got queries and questions about what's happening in the community, especially David. He's amazing for that. And also quickly um, acknowledge the hard work of the New Zealand women's curling team that is currently competing overseas. So if we actually look at the team of Ruby, Bridget, Natalie, Polly and Jess, all have a connection to Central Otago. Which is really amazing to see. So, switch the more the best with the games that we've got coming up. And hope it goes well. Yeah, thank you, Jaden. I am happy to move that our verbal reports. Tony. Oh, Tony, are you still no, here? No, he hasn't. Okay. Um, I'm happy to move that the verbal reports be received. And Roger is happy to second that for me. Those in favour? Aye. Uh, against? Gary, thank you. And now we move to the March 2023 governance report, uh, which consists of the status reports and the Alexandra Paul quarterly report for July to December. Do you have any comments on either of those, Wayne? Would anybody have any questions? I have one two so. Recommendations, so on page 85, recommendation made in the long term plan 2021 to 31 around an extension of the junior playground at Pioneer Park to provide for consideration in future annual or long term. Do we have any updates? Been sitting there with no updates for a long time. We're up to an end of that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've got the update. So, excuse me. So, the um, we do have a playground strategy, and we've got a new department that is Thursday. We will start pushing that along. So, I think it's probably better to be on the bat. But I'm just putting if you actually test the playgrounds here and there, you can look at we have no cross district and there's an each town as well. We have a main playground that we'll put our investment because it's not going to be, but we know. And make it a bit bad for the budget for the community to come over the next four years of health. That's amazing. Yeah. That is wonderful. Yeah. Thank you, Gordon. And I just had one from the Alexandra Pool. Will the ice swimming champs be held again this year? Uh, I think yeah. that's all, but I can find out in the notes. Oh. People can be hinted. Well, yeah. <laughs> maybe. <I think. laughs> Start practicing. <laughs> well, he might be able to respond to the next question. I did wonder that there seems to be a, a substantial increase in the popularity of that with it, Gordy. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, we, well, we've got more um, time slots available and got more people in person doing that, so we've been able to grow that, which is great. And um, we wanted to try and grow that um, at different times so people can come. Otherwise, there's people who move or don't move, or you know, numbers or retired people sort of come. We're just going to program to increase that over time. Cool. All good news. Thank you. Does anybody, Martin, got a question? Gordon, um, you got any comments on your uh, projections for the, heart, the, the six months to, to December seem to be a you know, Yes. Your targets as compared to last year for attendance, it, it, it's up and down, it's all over the place in, on those graphs. It's yeah, so they are all up and down because of COVID and stuff yeah. over the last two years. Yeah. Um, we yeah. haven't had that uh, in the last, I can't even remember, like that, maybe always. Yeah, yes. So I'm hoping we are going to the trend that way. Not up to this plan yeah. and not down. So, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. You yeah. don't think it's going to be. It can only get better, not worse. Yes. Yes. We're sort of on track to be better. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. For this year. 
Mm. It's possible it does look that. Yeah. 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 No yeah. And how are you getting on with your staff retention and and we'll let you find them? Um, well, funny enough, that's if you don't plan it, Alex. Yeah. Yeah, we've had some people come back and they're staying on they've done their OE and one's down for six months or so. So they're not looking too bad in the most cases. If they can come more slightly not you can change tomorrow as well. So yeah. yeah. People to move on. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and ties crossed. So, any further questions? No. Uh, so, I have someone move that the BBC, please. Thank you, Martin and Sydney Jaden. It's only leading to be received. Mm -hmm. uh, Marcus, all those in favour? Aye. It's carried. Thank you. State of the next. Meeting second. The second of May. Thank you. And then following on from that, for the reasons given on page 110, the recommendation is that the public be excluded from the following parts of this meeting. Someone happy to move that? Thank you, Martin. Seconded. Jaden. Those in favour? Against. Carried. Move away to the exchange over. Thank you very much.